purified heart, a heart that will see God is one that is willing to change. It is one that is willing to serve and obey and repent and to learn and have the willingness to pass the test, to -hmm. persevere in purity. It is the willingness to ask God to search our hearts, cleanse it through faith and lead us into ways of everlasting. Praise the Lord. My goodness. Amen. God is good. <laughs> Yay, Tara. Yeah. Great teaching. Great teaching. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, your compassion. We thank you for who you are, for what you've done, and what you will continue to do. Father, I just thank you because we already know that you are in the midst of us, O Lord God. It doesn't matter if we aren't meeting physically, O Lord. We know that you are here in each and every single room, O Lord God. And so we just thank you for giving us the honor of being in your presence, O Lord. Father, we just pray that you just bring revelation, O Lord, and that you just like use me as a mouthpiece for you and you alone, O Lord God. We are doing this for your glory and your glory alone. So we just thank you in advance for what you are doing even now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so you guys, question number one oh, before we get right. into... she, said, she said that I'm with questions. <laughs> oh, shoot. That's yeah. good. Before we even get into the scripture, okay, so what do you think of when you come across the word pure in regards to scripture, in regards to the world, like whatever? Like, what do you, what comes to mind when you think of the word pure? Anybody? <laughs> uh, when I think of the word pure, um, mm, this is ministering to me right now. You have no idea, the, my Lord. Uh, when I think of the word pure, I think of somebody um, <clears throat> who is striving, who is striving to remain um, untainted, uh, striving to stay um clean uh, in a sense of their conviction, um, either to an idea, to a philosophy, to God, um, or even clean from a certain addiction. You know, they're trying to stay pure, they're trying to stay clean. Um, when I think of pure, I also think of sacrifice, because I think that there are things that you have to give up. Um, the very things that would make you impure are usually the things that you, um, that tempt you. Uh, because they can be bridges into uh, impurity when, when, when we talk about it in a biblical sense. Um, yeah, so when I think pure, I, I think uh, temptation, but I also think sacrifice. Uh, and then I also think like reward. There, there, there's a major reward for walking in purity. Uh, and I think God honors that and um, blesses those who are able to keep themselves uh, pure for his cause, pure for, for, for the cause of Christ. Yeah. Delon? <laughs> um, when I think of the word pure, first thing that comes to mind is how not pure I am. How, 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 you know, and I don't know if that's like a good way of thinking it, thinking about it, but the first thing that comes to my mind is like, I am not that. Um, and I'm not that because I, not just because I'm human, but because, because I think that's kind of like a surface answer when somebody says, I'm only human. I'm like, yeah, that's true. But at the yeah. same time, um, because I just look at God's holiness and I look ha- at how not that I am and how much distance that is between him and I and, um, and like a lot of what Israel said, you know, striving to be that, striving to become pure, mm-hmm. um, being sanctified, being purified. I think that is what I think about. So I think about me not being that, the journey to becoming that. So it's the journey to becoming that. And, and is, okay, can Candace hear too? Yeah, she's in the kitchen. Hi Candace, what do you think of the word pure? <laughs> are we saying biblically or just the word pure i think she's in general right it yeah it doesn't matter when i hear the word pure i 
automatically assume clean um, without stain, um, pure, without corruption, without perversion. Um, pure to me, I always think virgin. Um, pure, pure to me, it, I guess godly, Christ-like. That's what I think of when I hear the word pure. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> okay, you guys. So we will be um, reading from Matthew 5, verse 1 through 11. Let me know when you're there. 1 through 11, you said, Tia? Uh -huh. Oh, nice. There. <laughs> oh, the muted twos. Okay. Okay. All right, Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be so called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when others revile, revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Yeah, my God. <laughs> Amen. So. <laughs> I see what's going on here. <laughs> So we will be um, mainly focusing on Matthew 5, verse 8, which is, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. However, I do want to, you know, start from the point of reference of, like, where it all begins, and that is the Beatitudes. And so this, I learned, it derives from a Latin word, which is um, Beatitudo, which means blessedness. And, you know, it is most commonly known that, yes, it is, there are eight of them. And they were taught by Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, these um, teachings talk of future rewards for specific qualities. And essentially, you know, Christians know it as like the ways we could best be of Christ's examples on earth, whether it be like through attitude, attitude or actions. Right. Okay. So why was it so groundbreaking? Can anyone answer that for me? A lot. Um, <laughs> if I can best answer it. Or, okay, or why, like, what's its significance to us? Oh, okay, so you just changed the question on me. Um, yeah. <laughs> my mind just went, like, one direction. I'm just like, oh, shit, turn. <laughs> um, honestly, you know what? It's not, the, it's not a different answer. Um, it, I think what's so brown, groundbreaking about it and how it applies to us is our heart posture. Um, it really... Because like you can't be any of those things without internally being it. Like you can fake it, but the real you eventually is going to come out and you will lose all of those rewards at the end. So it's really about, it starts internally with a lot of that, which, would, which made it so groundbreaking then when he said it and makes it so groundbreaking now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is he? Um, I think what the significance um, or why it was brown, brown, great, great, big, uh, brown, ah, <laughs> groundbreaking, groundbreaking uh, was because there was a, they were not, so the audience that he was preaching to wasn't used to uh, hearing such a, a, a message that was so uh, saturated with grace. Um, and the idea of internal holiness or, or internal uh, consecration. They were more used to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, uh, obviously coming from the law. 
um, to be able to gain the kingdom of heaven. Now watch what he does here, which is very different. All of these things, you can do all of, all of these things, um, which are all attributes of a Christ-like character. He was really describing himself. Poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, and persecuted for righteousness sake. That's Jesus' ministry. He was persecuted. Or theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So um, I, I don't want to uh, give too much, but I think all those things are um, e examples of what um, we should aspire to be like. And it was so revolutionary for those hearing it um, because their heart, their mind had been acclimated to a message that was less um, loving, less, uh, you know, um, freeing than this. Yeah. So we see basically like through this, like who Jesus elevates, who he speaks highly of, right? And so like, as I was studying and stuff, like I was on this website and they talked about like the comparison between the gospel of Luke and uh, Matthew. Mm. And they talked about like, you know, how in Luke, Jesus was coming down from the hill and where he had been like praying and he came out to like a level place where he basically it displays him coming down to humanity and addressing, you know, our sins and with the approachableness of Jesus, you know, and then in Matthew, we see that there's an ascent. He is rising up. Um, so he's going up to a hillside to address his early followers. Um, and in doing so, honestly, like, sets the platform for a revealed, like, law of God, like, show, like showing us, like, the ways of which, like, he's, like, what he wants us to be, you know, in order to be the represent, represent, wow, representatives, yes, <laughs> you know, that we are called to be. So this is something that, you know, we would have to attain. So they're like a higher standard that God is calling us to. Yeah. And yeah, so as we were just mentioning, it was a standard that shocked the people because it was the very opposite of what the audience expected to hear. Because like all throughout their lives, they're, like, you know, grounded by their culture and all that. And there's website, I love this source. It's Where's the source? I have to look that up. But it said, okay, yes, they're guided principles, but there were also laser guided bombs in the culture that Jesus was preaching to. Like these wow. statements, you know, took the aim at all that were like prized dispositions and virtues and their worldview. So like that to them, like things were like completely upside down because it's like, okay, you said blessed are the pure, the poor in spirit. Okay, I get that, but we get that too because like we're descendants of Abraham, right? What about us? Like, you know, and he's just like, no, I'm saying I didn't call the good people. I didn't call the moral people. I called the broken people to inherit this kingdom. Um, I called the people that knew not to rely on their own self-righteousness, but to like rely in me. And yeah. so that also like blew my mind too, especially because like in the beginning of this pandemic, I was really learning about the promises of God and stuff. And I was just like, oh snap, like that just like, right? It's, <laughs> it's craziness. Yeah. Um, and then just like also going back to that conversation of like, we knew like, especially like, I think we talk about this often, like, you know, being that hypocritical Christian or the Christian that judges like, He's not saying those who were basically emperors and conquerors and priests in that day, they were the ones that were blessed. It's not those who are looking down on other people. It's not those who have this earthly success without regard for our heavenly father. It is those that are like broken. And so that kingdom transformed. It wasn't from like top to bottom anymore. It went from bottom to up. Yeah. And so yeah so like he definitely just throughout this just proposed a different hierarchy yeah and so my third question would be do you believe the beatitudes lost its impact Ooh, wow <laughs> you're coming in you're coming in deep tea Ooh. oh my uh, jesus oh. would you like to go first <laughs> I guess I will. <laughs> um, I think that there has, okay. 
Yes, Lord. All right. There has been such a twisting in the priorities of the gospel where now a days a brand um a, even a ministry brand um a marketing idea um the want to be known or recognized um you know by people or to make an impact or to be in, in influential i think that is more unfortunately what oftentimes and end, ends up driving um ministries or uh even people who are trying to you know gain recognition or things um as opposed to you know what the beautitudes is that how you pronounce it beautitudes yeah i know i went on this i was like repeat 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 on dictionary.com they're like yeah. <laughs> so i was like so it's yeah. beatitude sarah yeah Be beatitude let me see if you guys will hear it beatitude yeah. Okay. Beatitude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. That the beatitudes. Um. Oh, I wonder if that means like be this attitude. Like. No, but I actually was thinking that in my mind when I first read. The beatitudes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. attitudes. This is how you should be. This the yeah. Attitude. Right. Right. So be merciful. Be pure in heart. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's what that. Oh no no. But you said the Greek. You already broke it down. What it actually meant earlier. But that's our own version of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so in a certain degree, I think that these, uh, principles, it's always important for them to be kind of recalibrated, um, uh, within believers minds. And I'm glad that we're studying this tonight because you can easily forget kind of what the, uh, what, what are the requirements, you know, within now, uh, within, within what Jesus spoke, um, to see God, to see the kingdom of heaven, um, and, and to be able to, uh, inherit that. And so I think that the impact of it has has gotten a little swayed, um, you know, because now they don't talk so much about being meek. They th talk about leaving a legacy. Now it's not so much about, you know, um, being, a, a, a being persecuted, you know, pe people don't, pe that's uncomfortable, you know, to be persecuted for righteousness sake that that whole thing is very very uncomfortable uh and so i think that there isn't so much that um it, it's and i think a great documentary that uh delon watched i watched and uh, tara were you there i don't know if you were there it was called american gospel christ alone yeah okay so that that uh that was a great documentary that kind of highlighted um a lot of the like for example blessed are the meek you know, uh, this whole idea of, of walking in humility, um, you know, and on that documentary, they address the prosperity gospel and they expose it. You know, they, they talk about how the gospel has become um, this whole kind of business to be able to uh, provide mental health and self-help kind of sessions on the pulpit um, for people to be all they want to be. And... Uh, accomplish all the goals and, and make this great influence. But I think that the way up is down, you know, in kingdom mathematics, the way to get greater is to decrease. Um, and so oftentimes you don't hear much conviction. You don't hear uh, this, the sanctification preached or uh, um, uh, re, 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 uh, repentance preached enough to be able to, to cover those things. So I think the impact needs to be reintroduced um, and I think that that's part of the agenda of reintroducing the kingdom through all of this. Yeah. Delon. <laughs> um, I agree with everything that you said. I think um, as human beings, the Pharisees are a type, not a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. Biblically, the Pharisees and the, and the way they thought, the way their hearts were, was a type or a vision of humankind, of mankind, of what we can become in the box of religion. When we have built a system that is built on how outwardly pure and holy you are, we then make it seem as if by our own merit, we've gotten to where we are. And so how does that appear? Because our lust for ourselves and our pride or our pride in ourselves is, 
is based off of the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, that even infiltrates religion to the point where if you don't have this amount of money, then you're not blessed. If you don't uh, live in this type of house, then you're not blessed. If you, if, you, if you don't have this type of influence, you know, are you speaking to millions of people at once on, online and things like that? If you don't have that, then you're not of the kingdom or you're not productive. The problem, is, the problem with that is that the Pharisees thought the same way. They had the influence. They had the money. They, they were outwardly holy and pure. They had the elongated phylacteries where it appeared, when you saw them walk by, you knew that they were a prestigious group and they were on another level to you. And so what our, I guess, Western society has done is when, the Christ, when Christianity started off as an upside down kingdom, they flipped it again. So now instead of going down, like Israel had pointed out, we think to climb the mountain. Yeah. That's what we're, we're looking at. We're, we're thinking of in order for us to be as holy and as pure as possible, perfect representatives of Christ, we need to climb the mountain instead of carry the mountain, instead mm -hmm. of carrying the cross, instead of going down low so that other, people's can, other people can step on your back up the mountain. You know what I'm saying? We were called to become steps up the mountain, not walk on other people and make them steps. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what we've done in this society and i'm not gonna lie it, it's even infiltrated my thinking sometimes sometimes i don't feel like i have enough you know i'll do a live on facebook and i'll have like five or six people that come in and it's like okay you, were, you gotta preach this word because don't back out because the word needs to get out but because i'm seeing the numbers are low i'm like god i'm not i'm not doing what i'm supposed to do and god is like who said you weren't mm -hmm. because the numbers don't look the way they need to look mm -hmm. You're preaching the truth. So the number isn't always going to look the way you need it to look. John the Baptist didn't have a million disciples. He had maybe 12, maybe 13, maybe 20 at most because of what he was preaching. Jesus had 70, but the moment that his, what he required of them got hard by mm -hmm. eat my body and drink, my, drink my, my blood, they were like, oh, I'm out. This is too hard for me. I can't do this. You know what I'm saying? So... I would even look at it this way. We got it so mixed up now, you can judge a church based off how big it is. I could look at your size and say, okay, there's something about the gospel that you're not preaching. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, that's my opinion. That doesn't mean it's fact. That's just, you know, how I see it. That just came in. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Shakri, is that you? Yes, me. Hi. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, shoot. Shakria, what's going on? Nothing. This is my sister's friend, Shakria. Uh, my Hi, dad, Maria. This is Israel and this is Tara. Hi. Hello. And my <laughs> dad told me that she would be joining us. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I got distracted. I was cleaning up and then I seen the time. Like, oh my God, let me get on. <laughs> <laughs> that is all right. I'm glad Welcome. that you can make it. Glad that you can make it. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Thank you. We're learning about um, the Beatitudes right now, um, which is found in Matthew 5, verse 1 mm -hmm. through 11. And so we're just mainly focusing on the topic of purity. Like, you don't have to read it right now or anything, but, like, I would love mm -hmm. to know, like, your thoughts on, like, what you think purity is to you. doesn't matter, like, if it's scripture-based or just, like, you know, just whatever that comes to the top of your head. You're, you're breaking up. Just basically, like, what does purity mean to you? Um, like, authentic. Like, just real. Um, I think that has a lot to do with, like, morals. Like, what someone believes in. Um, like, purity. Let me see. Like, if someone is pure, um, I guess, like, how they treat each other, the love is real. If, um, I guess like that goes back to the beliefs and morals. Like, what do you believe in? But is it real? Like, I would, I think I was just having this conversation with Bree about being authentic to people. Like, I was explaining to her that, you know, I, I believe in God and everything like that, but I don't go to church. So my thing with going to church is that I find that the church that I grew up in is a lot of hypocrites. And that was my reason on kind of not going. So I didn't feel like the church that I was in, it was pure. 
So it would be, that would be my reasoning for that. I like how you said authentic. Are you looking for another church? Like, I mean, even in the midst of all this? No, not, well, I just relocated to Florida. Oh, so. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. the question. Mm -hmm. What was it that you found hypocritical about the people in your church? Um, I would say the way that they like treated certain people, like they would have like these cliques and then it would be like they would talk on, about the other cliques and you know it was like a group that thought they were bigger and higher than everybody it was just like the way that they would you know basically the way that they would treat people like certain people would be in a church and say oh you can't do this or you know you can't treat people like this because you're a christian but then you turn around and you're a clique and you're doing it so it would be like more so things like that of basically like how they would treat like a church member in that family okay so let's flip that to outside the church right it's hypocrites outside too. Do, right. <laughs> so, and, and I get it. I get where you're coming from because you're, you're saying, but you're in the kingdom of God. So it should be different, right? Right. But does their humanity stop at the doorpost or does it come all the way through the doorway? No, I think it come all the way through. Right. And so when you say someone's being a hypocrite, they're being human, like sinful. They're just being, they're just being their nature. They're just being who they mm -hmm. are. And while I could say, trust me, I've been through the ringer with people talking about me and things like that. But the thing is, when you go into a church, God is, God want you. He's not, he's not worried about, oh yeah, that group. Yeah, they talk about the girl. You should, you should lead this church. He's not even saying that. He's like, right. what, what are you going to do? That's what he's saying to you. Like, what, how are you going to behave? Are you going to participate in it? Or are you going to be different. So yeah, I just want to present that to you. Okay. I gotta log off real quick and come back because the kids just ran in and said I gotta come downstairs real quick. So I'll be right back. All right. No problem. <laughs> yes. So I would say, yeah, okay. We all answer that it basically has lost its impact in yeah. the church. Growing up it was um I guess like taught like we have to know like the Ten Commandments and stuff like that. And even now I'm just like, oh snap, like I don't remember all those. And like, and now even like looking at these beatitudes, I was like, we should know these. And in order to fully know them, that um, in order to live them, we must fully know what they know are, them. not just refer back to it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so like, I know like, especially in the Christian community, like we use them, we utilize them like as platitudes um, and just things we hang on our wall, on um, things we like wear. Um, but like I was, a, I was studying and I was like, yo, like this has even like influenced other religions. So like, how is it not influencing like us the way like we should allow it to penetrate us? You know, I saw that Gandhi even spoke of the importance of the Beatitudes in his autobiography. And so like he read the entire Bible and it was quoted that he said the Sermon on the Mount went straight to his heart. And so... Wow right and it just says a lot about like you know us being children of god like is it still penetrating our hearts and are we living it out fully so like throughout all these the theme that i saw was purity like when you asked me is he to, like to lead i was just like i don't know what i'm going to teach i don't, I don't know what and it was just like i guess also it made me realize that I, whenever I ask God for something or whenever I feel like I have to ask God for something, I expect it to take a long time. Mm -hmm. um, neglecting how he already speaks to me. Um, and so like, I was just like, oh man, like, I don't know what I'm about to talk about. And then he was literally dropping like little hints here and there, like as the weeks like progressed. So I'll start with the most recent. Um, when we were talking about like my testimony about like, you know, speaking in tongues and Candace was like, wow, like God did that in the purest of ways. Oh, and I was like, hmm, right? Um, and then prior to that, like the week prior, I was talking to Melissa and I have been waiting on something for so long from God. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, why am I still here? And I was like, okay, maybe like, is my heart not right? is that why it hasn't happened yet? Like, I don't under, I don't understand yet. And like, Melissa told me I had a pure heart. And I was like, I never 
thought about myself in that way. I never did because honestly, I was like, I was in the mess and I was just like, you know what? I'm about to take a sabbatical because if I ain't right, I ain't doing none of this. Like, I'm just like, I need because <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And like, this season is just so rough. And it's like, it's not even the fact that I felt like I was doing something wrong, but it was just like, what's taking so long? But then she reminded me the difference between God revealing something to me and the enemy revealing something to me, right? And so, through the enemy's eyes, it's always whatever we're receiving from him, it will always be detortion and it will always be condemnation. Um, and so that was definitely a great reminder. And even in this, like, as she said that to me after, I was just like, wow, like, like it just never clicked in my mind. And it made me reflect even more because ever since I was a little girl, I realized like, yo, the enemy tried to make me believe that I wouldn't see God. It's mm. a blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And I was like, wow, God, so you led me to this verse. Bring me that revelation that I never considered myself in that category. Wow. Right? Wow. And I'm not even just saying it in the sense of like, girl, you dirty, girl, you a whole mess. Like, of course, <laughs> we know what we were saying. You know, we were all humans, you know? But yeah. at the end of the day, like, I do have that heart for Christ. And even if in that, the enemy will try to make you see something entirely different. Yeah. And so I also thought of the example of like, okay, I am who I am yes. online and offline. And I thought about like, you know, when receiving a compliment online, it's so touching. And like, maybe I'll even screenshot it and save it for a day that I'm so discouraged. And I'm just like, oh, that touched my heart, you know? Um, but it does not have like the same impact of someone who sees the good, the bad, the ugly, the mess, the process, and still consider yourself, your heart pure. And that is what God does with us. And so I'm encouraging you that we must always see our state of our heart from different eyes, the eyes of God, the eyes of our Father. Yeah. And so, yeah. amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I can relate, like, um, I deal with that a lot, like, what the enemy presents to me about the flaws in myself, and sometimes the volume of what, up the, sometimes the volume of his voice seems so much louder to me than the volume of God's voice, and, and, and part of that is because sometimes I can, I can myself be self-condemning, so I end up agreeing what the enemy may say before he even says it, and then, you know, I got to debunk all of that <laughs> back to what God has originally said about me. So I can definitely relate and definitely receiving compliments and things like that. That is the most, sometimes that can be the most awkward space to be in. Because when you hear it, you're like, oh, that felt so good and stuff like that. But then you're like, but is that pride if I receive it a certain way? And it, it, it goes into this whole battle and debacle. So I, I, I can definitely relate to trying to keep your heart pure and, and seeing it through God's eyes. Because honestly, I was talking about this yesterday. If we remember that our righteousness is... <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> um, if we can remember that our righteousness is not in us, then being able to see it through God's eyes is a little easier, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, mama. Oh. oh, so cute. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so going back into, um, you know, seeing how God sees us, I and mean, going back into that verse about, you know, um, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The first thing we learned from this beatitude is that Jesus is concerned with our heart and that it is not enough to clean up our act on the outside and so you know later on in matthew we see i was about to ask you where what, what, what you're... chapter 23 so that was matthew 23 verse 20 oh, that is my oh that's one of my favorite chapters and i don't even know why matthew 23 what, what, what verse 25 to 26 oh, okay uh, oh that's because he 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 does not hold back against his pharisees that's why yeah. 
<laughs> he is cutting throats. In the I, you know what? I thoroughly enjoyed this chapter. <laughs> when, I first, when I first read it, I was like, maybe I'm enjoying this chapter way too much. Look, it says, well, okay, I'm sorry, Tara, but there, my favorite verse is 13. <laughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. My God. That is my, <laughs> my God. I mean, that, he's just cutting necks, Jesus. Listen, that's worse but, when, 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 when John the Baptist called them vipers. That's worse. That's worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's cutting their heads up. But Tara, okay. what, what verse were you saying, 31? Um, 25 to 26. 25. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, in regards to how it's not enough to clean up our act on the outside, um, it is said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and of the plate, but inside they are full of extortion and rapacity. You blind Pharisee! First cleanse the inside of the cup, and of the plate that the outside also may be clean. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's powerful. <laughs> so, right. um, the aim of Christ was to, I think it just really goes to show like he wasn't just there to reform the manners of society, but change the hearts of sinners like us. And so, yeah, the heart basically, it is what we are, it is the secrecy of our thought and feeling. Um, what nobody knows but God. And we know like the invisible root is what matters to God as what we show on the outside because it is said man looks on the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. Um, and also that the heart are all the issues of life. One of my favorite verses talk about um, like, you know, what your, your heart speaks. No, your mouth speaks what your heart is full of, you know? And so, yeah, the heart is utterly crucial to Jesus. Um, so if there's anything like evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander, mm -hmm. those are what defile someone. That is when we need to be purified. That is when we need to be cleansed. That is why he came. That's so good. Amen. And Shakria, that goes along to what you were saying in your experience at church with the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. It's because they were attending church, but the inside of their cup was not changed. Was their not hearts changed. weren't changed. Mm -hmm. And right. so that's when you go into a religious, uh, uh, this is where you, when people say, oh, I'm not religious, I have a relationship. You know, when people mm -hmm. say that, right. that cliche is used because a lot of religious people never change, they just go to church. Okay. Okay. But the reality is, they say relationship, even though the cliche is a little misguided because religion is just an orderly form of worship. It's, mm -hmm. it's, been, it's a bad stigma has been placed on the word religion, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Religion isn't a bad thing. It's the use of religion. Mm -hmm. And so because people make clicks in church and they talk about each other, the use of religion has then been defiled. It's been dirty. It's been clean. Like nobody's using it correctly. Okay. And so, but when you go to Jesus and you allow him to clean out your heart, that is when the cup is cleaned on the inside first and then cleaned on the outside. And then it's presented as, you know, you wouldn't have the clicks in church if people were to clean the inside of the, the cup first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So your experience is based off of people who did not clean up the inside they just put their doilies on and their hats on and just decided to go to church. <laughs> they wore a big hat and was like, I'm gonna wear my big hat because it's, it's Easter Sunday, I'm gonna wear my big hat and I'm gonna show out who we're all red and all that stuff. And they appear a certain way. But in reality, mm -hmm. they have never ever allowed God to clean the inside of them, especially when they're in their 50s and their 60s. You've been in church for 30 years and you're still the same mean person? Oh, well. That's because you ain't been clean. So that's what that is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of her church example as well, too. <laughs> I should have let you do it then. No, no, you're fine. That was good. That was good. <laughs> so, so the next thing I want to talk about is attaining purity and persevering in purity. Question number three, and this could be like rather quick, is this even possible? <laughs> 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 I 
Wait, can you can you explain can you explain the fullness of the question so that Shakria understands where we're coming from? Like, yeah. So it is like we're focusing on the scripture that says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so we're talking about like, you know, everything that we have to go through on this earth in order to obtain purity. And it's like, is that even possible? <sighs> So I, I think that you can be, you can have pure motives and you can be a pure hearted person. Um, but to maintain that, I think in the midst of things that would otherwise gear you, gear you out of or tempt you out of, I think that's kind of a daily decision that you have to make to decide proactively that I'm going to be, I want my heart's motives to be pure. Um, and I think that it is possible. Um, I think that the, again, back to the, the first question that you asked, what do you think when you think of pure? One of the words I thought of was sacrifice. I think it's possible with, with the sacrifice of, of being aware that you're gonna have to give up things um, that would put in jeopardy your walk of, of purity in, in God, but also in growing uh, who you are uh, within the context of who God called you to be. Um, so yeah, it's very difficult, I think, because it, it requires a readjusting of, of, of your why. That, that, that's the biggest thing, like the, the why for what, the, the why behind why you do things. So why are you, um, why are you joining that church? Uh, why do you listen to uh, the, the people that you allow to teach or that pour into your life? Why are you going into that relationship? So like the why I think has to be aligned to God's heart. And so, and if that's aligned, then I think you're, actually no, when that's aligned, when your heart is aligned to God's heart and his purity, then everything that you do is going to have to is going to manifest as a result of that. But if that's together, and if that's like in its right position, I think that purity um, will will come because eventually, it's not you'll start doing things um, not not for your own kind of satisfaction, but but to please God. Um, so yeah, I think that's a process, especially if you weren't born in church. Well, no, I'm not going to say that. If, 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 you, if you haven't had a genuine encounter um, with God or, or, or his, uh, his love, you know, the, the, the purity of even his love, where he loves unconditionally. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I think. It's okay if no one else wants to answer. I have more questions for Peter. <laughs> I was going to ask something. Go ahead, Kree. Um, so is this more so about like, cause, <laughs> cause you're saying like the why behind the why you're doing something like purity as far as, wait, can you restate the question again? Three, question three. Um, is this no. even possible? Her, her question is was, it, okay. is it possible oh, yeah. to walk in so, purity? Okay. Cause the way I was thinking of it is like, you know how, um, like for Christians, it's, this, it's supposed to be like a certain, from my understanding rather, because I'm not, you know, I don't know a lot, but it's like a certain way that you have to be or a certain way you have to live or a certain way you're supposed to treat people and stuff like that. So for instance, I know a situation where someone, um, they, got, they got into an altercation and then a Christian way for, for you to do is just move on and pray about it and then, you know, let the flames die down or whatever, and then handle it when you're in a better mood or whatever. Um, so is it possible to be pure in that? Like, how do you maintain your beliefs when you're being triggered, basically? Hmm. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're definitely communicating that correctly. So what would be the answer to that question is though because a lot of us claim the christianity title on a surface level to a degree 
Christianity or in its infancy or it's in its in its depth is actually more of an internal thing that will then dictate your outside actions. And so for her, maybe it's not just the purity. The purity is not manifested in the outward because the purity in that area of her life, whether it be anger, whether it be self-control, that area of her life is still, still has not been addressed. So along with your heart being pure, you want to please God in every aspect of your life. And that starts in your emotions. How can you control your emotions? How do you express your emotions? When, do, you, do you play out the scenario before the scenario comes? Because that helps. When, when you prepare yourself for when somebody could potentially get you angry and you practice what your response will be before it comes, that's a part of what the Holy Spirit will do in his purifying of your hearts. Of your heart. He'll, he'll play out the scenario in your mind. He says, okay, what if so-and-so don't give you your money on time? What you gonna do? Mm. The Holy Spirit will say that. And then he'll, and then you'll be like, well, I'm gonna I'm a go up, I'm gonna bust him in his face. And then he's gonna be like, um, is that sound like me? Does that sound like how I will behave? Because the Holy Spirit will say, in my, in my opinion, I would say, say the money was a gift don't even ask for it back that's what the holy spirit will call you to response that's that's the response that he will ask you to give because that's the purity that he wants you to walk in where it doesn't even phase you like okay that that was an issue but you know what that don't bother me no more somebody talking about you okay that's nice i'm glad i'm the topic of conversation and you move on you know what i'm saying that's right. what the holy spirit will cause you to go into he'll so check I yeah so I'm just saying, so within the inside, if you're cleansed and everything, you know, becomes pure and you're living that purity way, then it is possible because you have already practiced how you will react to right. certain things. Right. It's, it's okay, possible, it. but it's more possible because, because in all honesty, the scriptures say that no, none, none of us are good. None of us can be good. We're going to have moments where we fall short. But the beauty, the beauty of what Jesus has done in his righteousness, he's made, he's, he's, he's allotted grace. He's allotted mercy in those times where you do miss it. And so through that, he then, as you, even in, even in your failures, say you make the mistake and you go off. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit comes and says, okay, I'm going to give you mercy for that moment, but I'm going to use this to teach you how to be pure in this. Because the Holy Spirit's also anticipating that you will not always be pure. Yep. He he sees the he sees the end from the beginning, so he knows that there's a potential that Shakria will not respond the way she should. <laughs> and so I am going to give her grace in the moment, let her get her emotions out, and then come back around and say, "Okay, now Shakria, did that sound like me?" And then it's understanding that pure purity and i feel like i'm now and in, going into my answer is now is it possible yes but it's a pro, it's a progressive journey it is not something that happens yep. immediately yep. it is you may not feel your purest until you're in your 70s and you still may feel dirty that is the reality of the purity of the spirit realm it is a lifelong journey as long as you're on this earth paul said that we will not be fully known by him or fully know him until we meet him face to face. Meaning that we will not accomplish what we need to do in these mortal bodies ever. As long as we're in this body, we're going to fail. As long as we're in this body, we're going to think of sin. As long as we're in this body, we're going to be tempted with all kinds of temptations from the world. And God is saying, yes, Shakria, I want you to strive for purity in your heart, but I am going to anticipate your failures before you make them. 